What's up everybody, welcome back to another Ride and Dad channel video or welcome if it's your first time either way. Very glad to have you. You saw the thumbnail, getting right back into the old Ride and Dad way of doing videos. Uh, but we are doing a my review on this helmet which happens to be a Shoei X14, which is discontinued but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Let's roll that intro. Alright, so right off the get-go, we're going to talk about some of the facts about the uh, X14-1. It's discontinued, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, I waited too long probably to do this video, but I wanted to make sure. I've actually had this helmet for, I think it was like three years. When did I purchase? I purchased this. Oh, of course, I didn't take a picture of the date I picture, or uh, the date I ordered it. I think I did it in like late 2022. Um, but those of you who know what was going on with my house stuff, uh, it took a little bit for me to get some actual riding time with it. I wanted to make sure I, had, I rode with it in multiple different conditions, rain, sun, cold, all that jazz. Um, yeah, so uh, I purchased this. When I originally purchased this, I purchased this for $662.14. Um, this X14 is basically Shoei's version of... Uh, the past helmet that I had, uh, which was an Arai uh, Corsair X. It's kind of their, I wouldn't say flagship because they, they have a helmet that's top, top tier. Uh, but this is kind of the race spec uh, top tier for regular people, if that makes sense. Um, so it's one of their, it's definitely one of their most expensive helmets. Uh, again, so the $600. So this helmet, uh, it's an intermediate oval. That's the only ones I wear. Uh, it weighs 3.62 pounds. And this one is Snell M2020D and DOT 218 approved. Uh, from the box, it comes with a clear only and one pin lock. Uh, so it's good that it had a pin lock, but the clear only kind of sucks. Um, but I, but it is glasses compatible. I wore sunglasses all the time with this, and this was fine. Um, so let's talk about why you can't buy this anymore. Um, Shoei now has an X15. Uh, they made some improvements. I'm not going to get into all of those because it doesn't really matter because that's not a review, or this is not a review on that helmet, the X15. This is a review on the X14. Um, now, you can find these on closeout prices um, with like 50% off deals, 60% off deals, and if you could find one of those, great. Uh, if you want to buy this one, <laughs> let me know because I have no need for it. Um, which we'll get to that in a little bit later. Anyway, so my general opinion on this helmet, uh, it is a great helmet. It is a premium feeling helmet, something you would expect from a uh, you know, uh, $400 and up helmet, uh, something definitely you would expect from the brand uh, Shoei. Um, it, uh, it feels a little bit lighter than, okay, so holding it doesn't feel heavy, but it doesn't feel crazy light either. Now, when you are riding in it, the aerodynamics of it does make it feel a little bit lighter. It does lift up. Um, it does. I have it off right now because I hadn't been using it because it's been hot as hell uh, in Florida. But it does have uh, it had two different um, chin curtains. Couldn't think of the name there. Two different chin curtains that came with uh, the uh, ab availability to put either one of those on. But like I said, I was riding with it off for more wind flow. Um, now something I've never been crazy about with Shoei as far as feel for comfortability is their interior padding feel. It's almost like a microfiber um, and my, <laughs> my fingers are rough. So let's see if we can get some ASMR. Feel that? Or hear that uh, anyway so they it feels fine on your head and stuff but it for hot weather there's just something about it I can't really describe it uh, with like great words but it just makes it feel it's my bug zapper just makes it feel a little bit warmer than it is a lot of times um, nothing crazy nothing that would make or break the helmet but I do prefer uh, liners like that's on the Arai or the Scorpion in the past, stuff like that that's more of a like a smoother finish instead of this um, microfiber is the, is the closest thing I can explain, you know, kind of compare it to. Um, and we'll do some uh, 
and tail was a little rickety. Uh, I got some uh, other background video that I'll, I'll show you when I'm doing the uh, the cheap pad um, change out because that was another thing. So this, uh, again, it really doesn't matter because you're probably not gonna be able to buy this stuff, but this is a super modular uh, helmet as far as interior padding goes. The cheek pads are one, the neck roll is another, or not the neck roll necessarily, but the uh, the back piece around the neck is one. There's a back piece around the head, there's a top part, there's a brow piece, uh, there's the sides. I mean, there's several different pieces in here that you could buy a couple different sizes from Showy and really customize the fit of this. Um, now, the stuff is not insanely cheap, so it's a pain in the butt if you're going to have to buy a bunch of them. Uh, what I went ahead and did, uh, if memory serves me correct, as it was like a year ago now, was I changed out. It did feel a little snug for my liking. Um, I think I changed out the cheek pads, and I'm pretty sure I changed out the forehead because I was getting a lot of uh, indents in the forehead because of how it is. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like a ribbed piece. Um, there was no necessary, I mean, I could have dealt with it. It wasn't, uh, you know, kind of like a awful feeling, but it definitely was something that I wanted to switch out if I, uh, had the possibility. As far as vents go, you got this one up front, which is open or closed, and you got this one, which is open or closed. I don't remember which one. One of them vents to the, uh, shield. One of them vents to the internals of the helmet and kind of channels it upwards. I will say the interior uh, around the nose and mouth area is a very nice, uh, I don't know if it's actually suede, but it feels very similar to suede if it's not. Um, you do have a carbon fiber part uh, for the face shield to click into. Uh, the face shield field of view, actually, you know what? I should finish one topic before I move on to the next. For venting, also do have one up top, open, close, and this one very up top, which is half open, open, actually I think, no, close, half open, open. Uh, as far as the back goes for the Venturi effect, sucking hot air out, there is no open or close, it's just open all the time, which really doesn't matter because if you have the front ones closed, you're not gonna get much suction action, and if you have the front ones open, you want those open anyway. So I don't mind when helmets do the rear uh, always open. To me, honestly, I'd prefer that because it's just easier to have always open on the rear and not have to worry if you uh, you know open stuff or not. Um, field of view is pretty good. Uh, I would say, in my opinion, better than the Arai Corsair X as far as top to bottom uh, kind of views. Um, but not as good as some other helmets I've used like the Scorpion, uh, Simpson, Rurox, stuff like that, which to be expected, um, the helmets just have a completely different look. Um, they this The shield that Shoei uses is very sturdy. Um, there's not, a, I mean, no more than you would expect from a shield. Um, no more flexing than you would expect. Uh, it locks fine. I never had issues with like half locking or anything like that. It unclips fine as far as detents. So you have full lock, then you could unclip it. Trying to do it slowly. First one, second one. There's a lot of detents. Third, fourth, fifth. I just skipped one. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. There's a lot. Um, so you can kind of ride with it various uh, different ways. Uh, going back to the venting, as far as like what you feel uh, in the helmet for venting, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's not the best. Um, still. The Arai Corsair X is the best, and I have a feeling that's probably gonna be the same for most premium Arais as far as the better venting because they are the only helmets, at least that I've ever seen, uh, and at least in the US, that have the built-in cutouts and little flappies um, that you can open or close in the actual windscreen themselves to let air right in at the head. I mean, you can't get better than that. It's right there, that's where the channels are. Um, so I think that's, and, and having them open like kind of kind of like an inlet ready for it. I think that's, uh, I, don't, I don't think you're ever gonna get anything better for felt ventilation than that. Uh, but this helmet vents pretty good. Um, again, it's if I had to rate it out of 10, I'd probably rate it like a seven and a half or an eight, maybe, maybe a seven, seven, seven and a half. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick at seven and a half. Uh, seven and a half out of 10 for venting. Um, the clarity of the uh, face shield, nothing short of what you would expect. It's a showy. Clarity is perfect. Um, it did have speaker cutouts. 
I currently have my, or what I was using was the Cardo, I think that's the Black Edge or whatever whatever this version, I, at the time it was the newest one. I'm so out of date with how many different new versions they come up, whatever. Um, so it has speaker cutouts. There's more than ample spots for internal wiring, you know, to snake all the wires through and everything. To remove the face shield, pretty easy, kind of typical um, for how much nowadays just have this little tab. You pull that and the face shield pops out. Uh, to put back in, you just put it back in. Something that is kind of interesting to show his newer helmet lineup uh, is that they have two different face shield options. So this one shipped with these little nubs on there. Let me get a little bit closer, maybe you can see them. I'll try to angle it so you can see it. There's these little kind of nubs, and these are supposed to decrease buffeting uh, and break up the turbulent winds on the sides. Um, now, I've read reviews that are 50-50. I personally have not used uh, this helmet with the optional face shield without those on it, but I've heard people complain that those make it a little bit more noisy, um, and they actually give them buffeting or whatever. I never personally had any buffeting with this helmet. Uh, I used it... Uh, on my M8 Softail when I had it, and then I also used it on the Sportster. Um, I've never had any issues with buffeting, like I said, or turbulent air issues or noise or anything like that, um, as far as that kind of stuff goes. So I don't know how it would compare to the other one, but no issues to note on that. Uh, as far as general noise for this helmet, noise is a super subjective, just like comfort, super subjective topic for helmets. Um, but in my opinion, I've used a lot of different helmets. I've probably used more than 10 uh, in the past six, five, six years, or actually six, seven years. Um, not to mention the helmets that I had before when I used to ride before uh, YouTube time. Um, so... I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on you know comparing them, uh, and noise on this helmet is pretty medium, in my opinion. Um, it is not the noisiest, but it's also not the quietest. There was no issues that I had for it. It was uh, pretty much what you would expect for run-of-the-mill noise. Um, it definitely wasn't anything that, uh, you know, anything to write home about as far as noise, good or bad. That was just kind of average for noise, which is kind of something you would expect for a helmet with a lot of venting holes and a helmet that's kind of uh, race spec. Um, it is more at home with the tucked position, as you would assume, given the fact that it is a, a, a racing style helmet for like kind of sports stuff. Um, however, that being said, obviously riding a Harley, I'm not tucking. Um, so uh, just fine. It, uh, it handled the um, kind of regular touring kind of position upright normal. Uh, I will say to get a little bit more venting feel, if you tuck your head a little bit, it really kind of picks up um, there, which again is something you would expect from a helmet of this style. Is this helmet a helmet that I would recommend to you? Uh, yeah, I would recommend this helmet. Uh, I think for the 660 somewhat dollars I spent on it, uh, I would say... <sighs> I would probably go with a different helmet instead. I know people swear by Shoei. Um, Shoei is, uh, it's always been okay for me, but it's never been my favorite helmet, but I really wanted to try this one out because of the good reviews uh, it got and, and a bunch of people have been loving Shoei. Um, I can tell you for comfortability for this helmet, for me at least, <clears throat> again, something that's very uh, subjective. Out of 10, I would probably rate this about a, I'm gonna do about a seven and a half again. Uh, it's not the most comfortable helmet I've ever used, and again, that's just me kind of personal preference with showy materials and stuff, but it is a very comfortable helmet nonetheless, and there is nothing wrong with it. Um, so again, like a seven, seven and a half-ish for comfort. Um, kind of styling looks, um, kind of typical. It's a little bit different back here as far as like the kind of uh, hard angles, uh, you know, and kind of flat surfaces you guys have for the styling compared to other helmets. I believe these, if I remember, these tabs, uh, at least they used to be when the X14 was running. Um, these used to be uh, replaceable. You can get different colors or whatever. Um, again, it's a premium helmet. You, you're going to get a good helmet that's going to last you multiple years with no issues, good product support, um, comfort, and everything like that. Um, but if you guys want to see the helmet that is actually my current to-date favorite, you're going to have to make sure you're subscribed and you turn on post notifications because that video is coming up pretty soon. I just want to give it another month or two of riding in that helmet, uh, make sure I really, really vet it, but I've been using it almost daily. Um, various weather conditions, rain, heat, uh, not necessarily cold that much, but cooler weather and stuff. Uh, and that helmet, 
not only is my favorite, but it is really going to surprise you guys. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna see that one coming for what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, this helmet, I definitely would recommend it if you can find it for one of those closeout prices. If you are someone who prefers the showy materials and the feel and kind of stuff, um, that there is nothing wrong with it at all. I would imagine the X15 uh, is even a better helmet. Uh, I can't imagine Shoei using different internal material for the cheek pads and, and all the padding in general, because uh, this is the same material that Shoei's used for years and years and years. Uh, it was on the Neotech 2 when I rode with that one seven years ago now, um, and it was on helmets before then at the time too. So I can't imagine the material changing, which is something that I don't personally love, like I, I stated in the beginning. Um, but yeah, if you can find this helmet on one of those closeout deals that like Revzilla or, or um, I can't remember the other helmets that I was just looking at yesterday, um, but they have some for, you know, in the three to $400 range, perfect deal. That's great. You'll have product support for windscreens and stuff like that because it uses the same, or uh, not windscreen, but face shield. Use the same face shield as some of the other helmets. So You'll have a bunch of product support with that. You'll get speaker pockets, you'll get glasses pockets, you'll get modularity for the padding and the internal for, uh, you know, head, uh, head, forehead, back, cheek, all that kind of stuff. You'll get a different, uh, a bunch of different spots. That was another thing I think I wanted to, uh, I forgot about that as well, but you would have already seen it on video, but the cheek pads, they do have different kinds, uh, styles with like flaps and stuff and like, um, so you can kind of get, get different um, styles for that. Oh. D-ring, uh, it did come with the double D-ring. I have since changed it to this kind of uh, ratcheting. I was testing this out. Um, I've never really had a helmet that I wanted to test this out on, but figured I'd give it a go. Spoiler alert, I don't love it. Um, it's just because it's not super comfortable. It's definitely convenient, super convenient. Um, it's very similar to the Neotech 2 ratcheting system that they got on it, but this is just kind of a aftermarket fit that you can put on any double D-ring setup. Um, I won't be buying it again just because it's a lot of material and pieces down in my neck area and it's not incredibly comfortable for that. But uh, it is really easy to do with gloves, without gloves, anything like that. Um, so it's, it's a pretty cool uh, thing and if the neck material doesn't bother you then go for it. Uh, but yeah, it did come with a standard double D-ring um, like most track style helmets are going to come with anyway. Again, something to be expected. Uh, yeah, the black finish is, you know, one of the cheaper finishes again. So if you bought something that's more expensive, or whatever, it'll be upwards of 660, probably in the mid to high 700 range for one of the color schemes or whatever. Um, but yeah, $662. I think there are better options, at least in my opinion, uh, just for comfort sake and a little bit higher venting. But overall, very good helmet. I do not regret buying this at all. Um, we got the little little ride and die vinyl on there as you can see. But yeah, so that's gonna do it for this review. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel, you turn on post notifications. You guys, for real, are never gonna expect the helmet that is my go-to helmet right now that I have been telling everybody that I really like and that I've been recommending. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel to check that video out. And if you don't know who I am, I'm the Ride and Dad. I got a 2013 Sporty, uh, currently, there's not a whole lot going on with it, uh, but there's stuff in the works. I just had a bunch of other stuff going on, but this bike is getting full club style build uh, when we get back into being able to buy some stuff for it. Uh, but yeah, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications, like this video, comment. You can find me on Instagram if you want to have a more in-depth conversation. If you happen to want this helmet, which is, it's used, but it's taken care of, um, let me know. I'll sell it. Until the next time, guys, ride safe, have fun. Dad, out.